Welcome. We're super excited that you're here to join us for our Passover story time. We're super excited to have Brianna with us today. She is thrilled to be living her childhood dream of being a children's book author. She's proud to be the author of many picture books, including the best-selling Where Do Diggers Sleep at Night series published by Random House. She's also proud to be the founder of Intergalactic Afi Komen, a new publisher of Jewish children's books whose goal is to publish out-of-this-world Jewish books for today's Jewish kids. Brianna lives with her husband and her two future astronauts in her home in Seattle. Thanks for joining us, Brianna. Thank you so much, Amanda. Hi, guys. I am, uh, what's that? Oh, I see some, 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 some other books at the library too. Cool. Hi, guys. So my name is Brianna, and you can call me Brianna. Um, but also, since this is a, a, you know, a Jewish Federation, PJ Library, I'm here for a Jewish fan. I'm also going to tell you my Hebrew name, which is Bracha. So you can call me Brianna or Bracha, either one. I answer to both. And I am an author. Now, I'm going to ask you, can you raise your hand or give me a thumbs up if you know what the word author means, if you've heard that word before and you know what author means? Awesome. Could somebody who wants to share, keep their hand raised if you want to share with everybody what you think author means? Thank you. Go ahead, Eva. Author means someone who writes books. Fantastic. If you agree with Eva, would you give a thumbs up if you agree with that definition? I'm giving two thumbs up because I agree with Eva. That's what I do, and I agree with you. Now I'm going to say another word. If you've ever heard this word, would you raise a hand or give me a thumbs up? Illustrator. Illustrator. Oh, I see a lot of thumbs up. If you would like to tell everybody what you think illustrator means, would you keep your hand raised? Izzy, go ahead. It's a drawer. A drawer, somebody who draws the pictures. If you agree with that, would you give a thumbs up if you agree with Izzy's definition of illustrator? Fantastic, fantastic. I agree too, Izzy. Now what I need to make clear to you guys, I just wanna make sure, because even adults don't necessarily understand this. I am an author. I wrote the words in this book. I am not an illustrator. I did not draw the pictures, or at least I'm not a professional illustrator. I have fun drawing just like everybody does, but I don't draw drawings of this quality. These were illustrated by Merrill Rainey, and he's the illustrator of that book. Now, I am also an author of other books, so I'm just going to show you a few of them. Oh, I see you have it there too, Izzy and Ellie. Cool. So I have written Where Did Diggers Sleep at Night, and this book by the way, it turned into a whole series. So there's all sorts of other books in it. There's like, where do jet planes sleep at night? Where do speedboats sleep at night? It's turned into a whole series. And this book, the idea for this one came from my son when he, he's now just had his bar mitzvah. He's 14 years old. But this book, the idea for it came from my son. I promise I will call on people in just a little bit if you want to, uh, is that, if that's okay, can I, or do you have something you really need to ask right now, say right now? Yes, yeah, say, why don't you, no, come share your okay. idea. Yeah. Go ahead, it's okay. Yeah, let's unmute. What's my favorite book? Oh, it's your favorite book. That's awesome. Oh, that makes me so happy. Thank you. Well, when my son was younger than you, he's when he was just two years old, he said, Mommy, where did dump trucks sleep at night? And I wanted to be an author. And I said, I have to write that book. So I tried to answer his question about where did dump trucks sleep. But then I wrote a book and it became a whole series. And if that's your favorite book, you're going to find this really interesting because it's been turned into Chinese. So I have i don't even know how to read it in Chinese, but I think it's really cool. And somebody, I think it may even, they bought rights to translate it into Russian and into Swedish. So it's sort of cool to me that it's in all these languages. And I've written all sorts of other books too. I've written one that you probably haven't seen, but this one, Tierrasaurus Rex is funny. It's about a dinosaur beauty pageant. And then I wrote one recently called Night Night Curiosity about the Mars rover. So this is another space book, but it's not specifically Jewish, although the girl might be Jewish. 
and she imagines that she's with curiosity landing on Mars. And her mom happens to work for NASA because the person who gave me the idea for this book was not my two-year-old son. It was a NASA scientist named Dr. Sarah Milkovic. And she and I tweeted back and forth and she told me I should write Where to Rover Sleep at Night. And so I did a lot of research and ended up writing Night Night Curiosity. So I shared with you guys, thank you for showing me the book. Guys, this is so much fun. Now I want to tell you, I told you two words, author, which you guys nicely defined as, oh my goodness, everybody's got my book. It's like I'm seeing my book in stereo. It's so cool. Thank you, Federation Literature Books, Burks and uh, PJ Library and everybody that everybody has these copies of the books. So what I wanted to tell you now is besides being an author, but not being a professional illustrator, I have another job. And I am what's called an editor. Has anybody ever heard the word editor before? Ooh, I'm seeing some head nods. If you think you know what an editor does and you'd like to tell everybody, would you raise your hand? And I'm impressed because I don't know if I knew what an editor did till I was like in my 20, over 20 years old. So- Max, do you want to tell us? Go ahead. You can talk. Now. I think an editor is um like a person that draws pictures and also like and also draws words. And Ooh. also draws words. Thank you so much, Max. Thank you. And I think what you said about uh, that definition, the author is the one who writes the words and the Ed Illustrator is the one who draws the pictures. And so you gave two really, really important jobs of what authors and illustrators do. Thank you. Thank you. And does somebody else have another definition of an editor? Go ahead, Izzy. Um, but I do have a book that is Mo Willems. He Mo Willems writes right them. He likes and draws the pictures. He is an author and an illustrator. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie, and thank you, Max. Guys, I'm going to tell you my job as an editor because I never knew it when I was your age. It's a hard one. I've, I really don't even usually ask that question. I just knew we didn't have to stop at exactly 30 minutes, so I figured I'd make it a little more challenging for you. But an editor is the person who helps the writer with their words. So I say to somebody, we're going to buy your book and we're going to publish it so boys and girls can read it. And then I help them make their words as good as can be. And so I actually worked with the author of this book, Barbara Beats, who's written some Jewish children's books that you might know, like one about Shabbat in the Southwest and a great new poem. She's a great award-winning Jewish children's book author. And I helped her edit this book about do it Jewish, use your Jewish creativity. And this one's more for ages about eight and up, about people who want to learn to be more, like to be creative in all sorts of fun ways, like making Jewish films and making Jewish cartoons. There's like eight chapters in here. And I also edited a book for Jill Ross Nadler about such a library, a Yiddish folktale reimagined. And this is the librarian in this book whose name is Misunderstood. And she's magical and wacky and zany. And she has a chicken in her hair. So I love her. And so for all of these books, I get to work with the author to make it as good as can be. And then I've been working with the illustrator, the illustrators and the designers of these books to actually make all the illustrations come out amazing. And so would you guys like, I can give you a sneak peek of some books that aren't even published yet. Oh, I'm seeing some head nods. Well, we have one coming up called Bubby and Bart's Matzo Ball Mayhem about a Bubby and her puppy and some flying matzo balls as they're getting ready for Shabbat. And this is Bubby and this is her puppy Bart because a puppy is a Bubby's best friend. And that one is <laughs> so cool. And it's by Bonnie Grubman, who's a wonderful Jewish children's book author. And Deborah Melman, who's also done beautiful Jewish children's books, is doing the illustrations. And we will have that one out super soon in September. But it's already going to be available for pre-order, hopefully, later on today. And this one is 
about Hava Nagila. You know the song, Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila. Well, the author, Frida Lefkowitz, wrote the story of Hava Nagila, but she told it as though Hava was a girl and she was traveling from where she started as a wordless song, Nigun, in the Ukraine. And she traveled all the way through to America and to London, where Ali Raisman performed gymnastics to Hava Nagila at the Olympics. And this book is by Frida, and it's illustrated by Siona Benjamin, who's an award, an amazing, amazing artist from New Jersey and originally from India. And so she drew Hava as a young uh, Jewish girl and who's blue because many of Siona's characters are blue. Yes, I see we have a hand up. Can we, does somebody have a question? Um, my Jewish name is, ha one of the names is Hava. Hava, just like Hava Nagila, just like Hava. Oh my goodness. Well, that book, believe it or not, is called I Am Hava. So you might like that one because it has your name in the title. And I see there's another hand raised. Yes. Go ahead. My Hebrew name is... um. <laughs> Do you remember what it is, Avi? No. No. Oh. <laughs> is Avi your Hebrew name? Because Avi's a Hebrew name. Avi's his first name. I don't know if that's his Hebrew name as well. Avi, Avi. Uh, okay, well, that's so neat. Thank you guys so much. And I'm going to go on because Avi is a Hebrew name, so it might be. And I'm going to go on now because we're going to talk about Passover in outer space. But so before I read you my book, I want to ask you a couple questions about Passover in outer, outer space. My first question for you is, do you have a favorite part of Passover that you're looking forward to? Does anybody, oh, I see a thumbs up. I see some thumbs up. If you have a part of Passover that you really like, would you raise your hand and Amanda will help call on people to share their favorite part of Passover? Go ahead, Max. Um, I wanna, I, I, I like Passover because my dad likes a horseradish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the horseradish is in this book, but we have special space horseradish. You'll have to tell your dad. So when we read it, you be looking out, Max, for the horseradish. Okay. Awesome. Go ahead, Avi. Oh, you're muted. Can you unmute yourself? I think it's in the corner. There you go. What's your favorite part, Avi? Eating matzo. Eating matzah. matzah. Oh my gosh, we've got space matzah in this book. Space horse runner, space matzah. Yes. Oh my goodness. Does anybody else have something else they're looking forward to on Passover? Oh, I think. Wait. Is that a hand? No, that might be it. That might be that might be, a, that might be a stretch. <laughs> that might be a stretch. And we're gonna have that's coming up in the have have an Aguila book. We've got gymnastics in there because we've got Ali Raisman at the Olympics. So that's the first one we've got Olympic gymnastics. Guys, awesome. Now, does somebody else have a favorite part of outer space that they'd like to share? Or did you have a favorite part of Passover? Were you was that a thumbs up? Ellie, I see your thumbs up, Ellie. Did you have a favorite part you wanted to talk about? Go ahead. Can you unmute yourself? There you go. Um, we have Passover bags. The oh, Passover bags. bags. I love it. I love it. And I did not think to put Passover bags in the book, but I love that you guys have your special Passover bags. Those are so special and you're so lucky to get them. And I know that everybody worked so hard, Amanda and Naz, everybody worked so hard to get them to you. So big thank yous. Oh my goodness, guys, you have, and, and Max, was that one more thing you wanted to share about Passover? Oh, no. Okay. So guys, does somebody have a favorite part of outer space they want to share with us? Does anybody have a, something, a part of that, or maybe not a favorite part, just some part of outer space you know about or you like? Yeah, Max? Go ahead, Avi. 
Oh, Avi, I said the wrong name. I said the wrong name. I'm sorry. Uh, I like uh, uh, penguins live in Neptune. Penguins in Neptune. Wow. wow, cool. Very cool. Do you know what? Is I have it, a lot of planets in this book and I don't have Neptune that I specifically. There's water. Because there's water in Neptune. Water. Ooh, you know about water on Neptune? Yeah. You'll have to. It's very stormy in Neptune. Cool, also. cool. Does anybody else? Thank you. Thank you, Avi. Does anybody else have another part of space that they're interested in or some part of outer space you've heard of? Izzy, did you have something? No, okay. <laughs> oh, I think I see a hand raised next to Avi. Eva? Eva. Um, one place I know about, one um, thing I know about is there's planets in outer space. There's planets in outer space, and there are going to be planets in this book. Awesome. Thank you. Well, guys, I'm going to share my screen now because that book. Oh, wait, are you are you? Uh, oh, wait, you know what, guys, do one second before I share my screen. I'm going to share one more thing. I have my space helmet here and I'm going to put it on because we're going to be astronauts today. We're going on an intergalactic Passover voyage. Here's my space helmet. Would you put on your pretend space helmets to join me? Can you put on your space helmets? and buckle in because we're going to be blasting off. I'm sorry I did not get a permission slip to take you into outer space, but we're all going to be blasting off into outer space today. Just for the record, this is a pretend astronaut helmet. This is my son's toy one. I wish I was a real astronaut, but I'm not. I'm actually in Seattle, Washington, not in space, but I wish I was in space. And one of our future books, I can't even tell you the name yet or the author yet, but we have a book being written, hopefully, by a Jewish rocket scientist, actually a, a nonfiction informational book about outer space. So I will, I will be announcing that one very soon. I'm very excited. So now that we're all with our space helmets on and we're buckled in, get ready for blast off. Uh, get ready for blast off because I'm about to share my screen and read you Asteroid Goldberg, Passover in Outer Space. And here we go. And here we go. All righty. Asteroid Goldberg Passover in Outer Space by Brianna Kaplan Sayers, that's me, and illustrated by Merrill Rainey. He did the amazing pictures. And let's see. And there's Asteroid and her family and her robot dog. You will see when you look up close in the book, robot dog isn't in my words, but robot dog is in Meryl Rainey's amazing illustrations. And they're flying their Jewish rocket ship with a Magen David, a Star of David on the side, home from, well, you'll see where when I start reading the book. All righty. Oh, and I see Asteroid and her parents enjoyed their galactic flight as she zipped them home from Pluto to prepare for Seder night. Guys, they're going home to get ready for a Seder just like a lot of us do. Attention Goldberg rocket, you'll have to wait to land. Oi, pass over in outer space was not what they had planned. What would a Seder be in space? The grown-ups had no clue, but their space whiz asteroid took a more creative view. Guys, asteroid is a creative and mighty young Jewish girl, and she is ready, even though her parents have no idea, asteroid is ready to solve this Passover predicament. So let's see what she does. She flung the fridge door open. Pastrami flew from rye. Bagels floated far from lox. <gasps> oh, let's see. She watched their comets fly. 
guys, pleading for outer for Passover in outer space is a little tricky. All your Passover items start flying all around the spaceship, and then they start floating out into outer space with those bagels and those and those donuts and all that comets we're not supposed to eat on Passover and those Passover pickles. Can you float with me in outer space for a second? Just float with me. Ah, oh, all righty. Where will we find Pesach food? Asked her parents with dismay. We'll find it all in space, says Asteroid. Our pantry's the Milky Way. Guys, their pantry, they are going to find all their Passover food in outer space. She aimed their ship toward Jupiter. So many yummy moons. <gasps> There's all Jupiter's moons. Matzo ball, said Asteroid. All we need are spoons. <gasps> then watch what she does next. She grabbed hold of the Big Dipper. What a perfect ladle. A starry spoon to help her scoop. Each delicious knadle. And guys, knadle is the Yiddish word for a matzo ball. So I imagined that, Matt, that Asteroid Goldberg might use Jupiter's moons for her matzo balls and the Big Dipper for her ladle, her special Passover spoon. Oh my goodness, and somebody said they liked matzo. Now where could she find matzo? She couldn't wait to munch. She broke a piece off Saturn's rings, the perfect Pesach crunch. And somebody said they like planets. Well, I imagine that Saturn's rings might be asteroids matzo balls. Somebody said they liked horseradish. Here's our horseradish page special for your dad there, Max, and for you. Then she headed back to Jupiter with its spot horseradish red. Such a tasty bitter herb for their unleavened bread. I imagine that if she needed a horseradish, she might go straight to Jupiter's red spot. Have I mentioned that Asteroid Goldberg Passover in Outer Space is an out of this world Passover fantasy? It is not a nonfiction book about space. There's a lot of imagination in here. This one that I wrote, Night Night Curiosity, it is a fantasy because she imagined things, but the facts in here about the Mars rover are all perfectly accurate. But Asteroid Goldberg is more of a pretend imagination fantasy. <gasps> Now their food was almost ready. It would soon be Seder night. She peered into her telescope. What guests could she invite? Oh my goodness, does anybody here like to be with family for your Seder? Can you give me a thumbs up if you like to get together with grandparents or cousins or anybody from your family or maybe special friends? Well, Asteroid wanted to find special friends for her Seder. Grandma Luna biked on Venus. Uncle Cosmos hiked on Mars. Aunt Andromeda and Cousin Corona were giving tours of all the stars. And now it's time for the Seder. Each guest opened a Haggadah, saying the order of the evening, then drank from a space kiddish cup while zero gravity leaning. Guys, it's traditional to lean at our Seder to put a special pillow on our chair and lean to remember we're free and not slaves in Egypt anymore. But so if we want to, but I thought in space, they might lean like by floating in space. So do you want to pretend you're leaning by floating in space for me a second? Oh my goodness, guys, and maybe at your Seder, you'll, you'll remember that when you have your Seder this week. And guys, there was something else I thought might be really different. They have their kiddish cups with the grape juice inside of them or the wine for the grown-ups. But I thought for their kiddish cups, they might be almost like sippy cups because otherwise their grape juice might float away into outer space. So if you notice, Meryl drew, Meryl Rainey drew the, the kiddish cups there with like little sippy cups so the grape juice wouldn't float away. Soon, Dad hid the Afikoman. Oh, wait, does anybody here ever search for the Afikoman? Would you give me a thumbs up or raise your hand if you've ever searched? <gasps> anybody here ever found the Afikoman? Ever, ever find? Oh, I see some thumbs up. Soon, Dad hid the Afikoman and reminded them no peeking. 
this would be asteroids first seder with intergalactic seeking guys can you give me a thumbs up if you see where abba where dad hides the afi Komen? does anybody see in the picture how dad hides it in robot dog's head look really closely it's in robot dog's head and i'm gonna tell you please look really closely because i don't tell you in the words of my book where the afi Komen gets found you have to look in the pictures meryl rainey's pictures for that so would you give me a thumbs up if you see later in the book where dad where they find the afi Komen? Manish Tana came, come, came next, the four questions. Asteroids started to sing. What makes this night so different? The answer, everything. It really is very different to have a Passover Seder in outer space. Asteroid acted out the story of Egyptian slavery. Without the pull of gravity, she really did feel free. And cousin Corona is pretending to be Moses. Let my people go. And asteroid is dressed up as Pharaoh. So asteroid says, no. And cousin Corona, Moses's staff is floating in space and robot dog is dressed up as an ancient Egyptian dog. All righty. Finally came dinner, which was just a bit bizarre. She liked her matzo balls to float, but this might go too far. Guys, will you give me a thumbs up if you see where the Afi Coleman gets found? Does anybody spot it? I'll give you a second. Oh, I see a man. Oh, I see some people are spotting it. Here's Cousin Corona found the Afi Coleman hopping, just popping out of Robot Dog's head. And next comes, they're opening the door for Elijah. Has anybody here ever opened the door for Elijah during the Seder when we open up the door and there's that special cup for Elijah? Well, asteroid popped the hatch, not the door, but the space hatch. Asteroid popped the hatch for Elijah's space debut. She looked outside and heard a voice. Oh my goodness, guys, could the voice be Elijah? Let's see. It was Houston coming through oh guys it's not uh it's not actually elijah it's houston oh it's not letting me move you oh there we go it was houston coming through and here's what houston says the goldberg ship can land but asteroid shouted no this seder wasn't long enough it can't be time to go Wow, I didn't usually say when I was little that the Seder wasn't long enough, but I think Seder in space is even, even extra fun. And guys, there's their space radio and their rocket ship, and it's blasting a Passover song. Had God, yeah, had God, yeah. And that's the one about my father bought a goat and there's a dog and a stick and everybody in that song. And so I thought that might be blasting off the Passover radio. And then they're all having fun at the Seder. And Asteroid said, let's stay the week, then head on back to base. And her family all agreed. Next year in outer space. Oh, thank you guys for being such excellent listeners. And guys, it is traditional at somewhere in the Seder, we say next year in Jerusalem, but I figured Asteroid and her family would say next year in outer space instead. You guys were amazing. I have a question for you. Does anybody have something that was very different in outer space Passover than when we have Passover at our homes? Because like we on earth sing the four questions, how is, how is um, this Passover different from every other Passover? But I thought we could do the intergalactic four questions. How is Passover in outer space different from every other Passover? Avi, I think you have something that's different from Passover in outer space. What is space? It was in space. The whole setting is different. So if we were going to sing that, like the Manish Chana, like the four questions, and you can sing it with me, but maybe muted, 
How is Passover in outer space different from every other Passover? Different from every other Passover? On every other Passover, we have Passover in, on Earth. But this Passover is in outer space. But this Passover is in outer space. Yai, dai, 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 Thank you, Avi, for helping me do intergalactic four questions. And I think, um, I think Max has another intergalactic four questions. What's the difference you have, Max? Is that we do fortress test and um, we do contests and me and me and my dad go against each other and we see who can eat the most horseradish on their bread oh, and, awesome. and I usually win. Oh, wow, wow. Avi, oh, Max, you have a Maror contest. That's so cool. Thank you, Izzy and Ellie. Max, I love your Maror contest. That's so cool because my family has a Maror contest too. Not a special space Maror contest, but we do a Sephardic version of the Seder. And so when we sing Kadesh or Chatz, we sing it to a different tune, the order of the Seder. And when we get to Maror, which means the horseradish, the bitter herb, we all try and sing the bitter herb song as long as possible. So we all go Maror, and we try and say roar as long as possible. Oh my goodness, but I wouldn't be brave enough to do your contest, Max, of saying of eating as much maror as possible. In fact, my Sephardic maror is like romaine lettuce a lot of the time. So sometimes I'm brave enough to eat that, but sometimes I don't even eat something that bitter. You guys are amazing. Does anybody else have a difference between Passover in outer space and Passover on earth or just something special that you do at your Seder that you love to do? Oh my goodness. Well, you guys have been amazing. I have a special part now of my author visits that I want to do with you. It's special to ask questions for Passover and it's special to ask questions for an author visit. So my question, does anybody have a question that they'd like to ask me? Does any, anybody have something you wonder about being an author or about Passover, about that outer space, or just about me, Brianna Kaplan, Sarah's bracha, that you're wondering that you'd like to ask? Because I am happy to ask any questions. And by the way, grown-ups are allowed to answer quest ask questions too, because grown-ups are people too, and I get some great questions from kids and some great questions for grown-ups. So I'm wondering if anybody has anything they wonder or would like to know about me or my books. What's your favorite Passover food? Ooh, my favorite Passover food. I love matzalatkas. I love my husband's matzo balls. And I, because I'm also half Sephardic, I have to give some special Sephardic Passover foods. So I like piscado con huevo y limón, piscado with lemon and egg sauce, piscado con tomat, fish with um, tomato sauce. I like prasa fuchis, prasa, which is leek in Sephardic. And I also like gefilte fish because gefilte fish is awesome. So, oh yeah, I'm getting so hungry now. <laughs> I'm ready for Passover to start. Ellie, oh. did you have a question? Go ahead, honey, you're unmuted. <laughs> Did you have a question that you wanted to ask Brianna? Are you? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Did somebody else have a question? I don't think I saw any hands. I think because so many of us. Oh, Miss Nancy has a question. Yes. What What's your favorite uh, Passover tradition? Ooh, I think my favorite tra Passover tradition might go along with a lot of kids here. It's finding the afikoman because that afikoman is so much fun. And I know, in fact, next year, I'm actually hoping to sponsor to make a program where I can invite all of you and maybe all the other kids who've done my visits. And maybe we can do an intergalactic afikoman search where we can do a, a looking for the afikoman in outer space because it's so much fun. And I think I see another hand raised. Hi, Bella. Um, how long did it take you to write the book? 
That is an awesome question. Be Bella, was it? Bella, thank you. So it actually took me a long time to write this book, but I didn't write it all straight. I actually started writing this book 15 years ago, and I know it's only 500 words, but I think it was around a long time ago I started writing it, and then I would work on it and work on other books and work on it and work on other books. And so, and I'm always working to do what's called revising, make my stories better. So I can see there are some authors among us. Some, If, if you've ever written a story, would you give me a thumbs up? If you've ever written a story or a book yourself or a, a short story or a poem, if anybody's ever written something. Awesome. Awesome. So it took me a long time. And then I revised and revised it when I knew it was going to get published. I revised it more to make it as good as can be. I want to tell all the people who write books or might write a book or are thinking of writing a book that a couple things. First of all, um, if you write a book, and you ever, I'm hoping that someday you'll get to come back here and uh, to your library and your PJ library, and you'll get to be the visiting author someday. So I think that's really important. When you write a book and you get it published, would you write a note to me, to Brianna Kaplan Sayers, find my website or find Intergalactic Afi Komen, my publisher's website, and send me a note and say, you remember you were the author at my PJ library event a long time ago, and now I'm a published author. And would you please tell me that because I will be so proud. I say that at every author event and I can't wait till a child or an adult, whatever age you are, just please send me a note. I'll be so excited. And there's one more thing I have to tell you. It's about the word rejection. And if you know the word rejection, you might know that it sounds like sort of a sad word. It's when somebody tells you no. Um, but I got a lot of rejections and every author does, including JK Rowling, the author of Harry Potter, got a lot of rejections like every author does. And I have like eight books published and my editor just told me this week she wants to even publish two more of my books in the Where to Dig or Sleep at Night series. So those aren't even out yet. But still, I still get people telling me no, that they're not going to publish my book. And that's okay. It just meant it wasn't the right book for that publisher, for that editor. But the reason I want to tell you that is I, a lot of people think that if they get a rejection, it means they're a bad writer or they're never going to get published. And it doesn't mean that. It just means that you just shouldn't give up. Keep on writing. Keep on getting better. Keep on revising. And eventually, you'll get a book published, too. And in fact, this is going to sound crazy, but I made it my goal to get 100 rejections. And people, even adults, think that sounds so crazy. Why would I want 100 rejections? I would want to get tortured and have a hundred people tell me no but you know what that kept me from giving up and i just kept on sending books out there and kept on sending books out there so i really want to let you all know that because it doesn't mean you're a bad author when you get rejections and in fact now that i'm an editor and i have these books where i edit them i have to write no to people i have to write rejections and that really hurts me because i'm an author just like them but i know that it's important that people get those rejections so they can send it to another editor who's the perfect perfect editor for them and i also write a lot of rejections because we only publish in my publishing house we're really small we only publish two or three books a year so i mean i turn away a lot of really great man manuscripts. And it's it's just really important that you not give up if you want to achieve your goal, whether that goal be being a writer or any other goal you have in life. Don't give up. So I just had to tell you that because a lot of people think that it means they're not going to be an author if they get a rejection, but that's not what it means. And authors, we keep our rejections proudly. And I will tell you, that the house that said yes to this Charles Bridge that published Night Night Curiosity, years and years before, they gave me a full page personal rejection to another book that I wrote called Captain Volume and the Pirates of Perimeter. So just because a house says no to you doesn't mean they won't say yes. You guys have been amazing. I love that. I love that so much. Because so many of us already have our copy of Asteroid, I was hoping that maybe we could all hold our pick our book up and then I'm going to take a picture of all of us with you um, so we can celebrate the fact that you were here. So if you have a copy, I know most of you got it already in our kits. 
hold it up. I'm going to try to do this here and not have my phone in the picture. I love seeing you with your books and your smiling faces. Big smiles. All right, ready? One, two, three. Jeez. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Brianna. This was so much fun. I hope you have an awesome Passover wherever you are, Seattle or outer space. Or outer space. I wish it was outer space, but I think it may be Seattle on a Zoom <laughs> theater. And thank you guys so much. You had so wonderful comments and listening. It made me so happy to meet all of you. Thanks, guys. Take care.